So got a treat coming up for you in this one. So this is another episode of the 300 blackout testing in the gel blocks. And uh, this might have been the start of the show <clears throat> for all these episodes. Get a look at this baby here. This is the uh, Lehigh Defense 194 grain max expander. And if you can see the lines cut into this, this is an all copper bullet and these lines have been cut from the tip all the way down to here to help aid in the expansion and boy does it ever. <clears throat> so let's get turned around here and take a quick look at the loading and then we'll move right on into the video. All right, so here we go. So once again, uh, Hodgson's Little Gun, uh, CCI, Small Rifle Primers, number 400, uh, Lee Eye Defense Bullets, 308, 308 cal max expansion, uh, subsonic only, 194 grain, and once again, Starline Nickel Brass. And here's a quick look at this. So uh, you can see here, how much of this uh, bullet is down in the case of this 300 blackout. Does not leave a big lot of room for powder in there, but you know, enough. And uh, actually, if I remember correctly, I might've been overdriving these. These are rated for subsonic only, and I was a tad bit above subsonic. Uh, you'll see that at the chronograph footage from, the, from Garmin Zero coming up here. Uh, and I do have some curiosities about this that I'll mention on the closing. But for now, let's get into the video. All right, guys, next up, I'm gonna do the, the 194 grain Lehigh Defense Max Expansion Bullet. Uh, these things are cut from the top all the way down to about right here. And these four pedals should open up and give some really nice expansion. Uh, these things also, depending on the, the rotation of your barrel, uh, they'll get about a turn and a half or two inches of rotation as it goes through the target. So uh, I think this is a one in 10 twist on this barrel. Rotation does make a big difference on these. All right, here we go. This is a subsonic round. Go see what that one did. I uh, did not get a velocity on the garment either. All right, guys, so here is my entry. Oh, look at this wound track. So we, uh, we were completely opened up. about two and a half inches. And from that point on, we've got, we got about a turn and a half of rotation. And right here's our bullet laying in at about 18 inches of overall penetration. So this is a subsonic round. Uh, I did not get a velocity on that. I think I had forgot to change my velocity from 1700 plus to 1700 and lower on the velocity. So that was an operator error on the Garmin. I'll go back and change that one for round two and uh, it'll be coming up here in just a second. All right guys, so one of the big differences about the Garmin is uh, you do have to select your velocity range. They have a six to 1700 foot per second and a 1700 to 5000 foot per second velocity range. And I had selected the 1700. This was a subsonic load running hopefully a little over a thousand feet uh, per second. So we'll find that out here in a few minutes. So I had it set on the wrong, the wrong velocity range. So let's get this reset correctly. <clears throat> and let's put our next round down through there. I'm consistently hitting quite a bit lower than where I'm aiming. So 
So I'm going to try to get this one up a little bit. All right, so here we go. This is the uh, Lehigh Defense Max Expansion. 194 grain and 300 blackout. Once again, I did not get velocity. I'm going to put these out into the backstop. Hopefully, the Garmin will have a, a better look at them with a longer distance. Eleven eighty one. So these are going uh, faster than sub. Try another one. 1185. Okay. So we're nowhere faster than sub. Uh, I'm actually going to pull this last bullet since we know that we're running faster than what we want it to run. I'll pull this one and reload it uh, with a decreased power charge. See what round two did. So, expansion was at about the same distance. Wound track looks about the same. And look here, guys. These actually have uh, spun around backwards. They're they're layered in there together here at about the same distance in. So once again. You know, we're looking at about 18 inches of total penetration. I don't see any fragments or petals. So I'm going to say we've got 100% weight retention on both of these bullets. And that, that wound track is just devastating. That, that is pretty impressive. All right, let me get these dug out of here, and I'll get some still pictures up here after the end right, of the video. Guys, so I've got these out of here. And uh, this is just absolutely wicked looking expansion on these. No fragmentation. I've got 100% weight retention on both of these. No polymer tip. So except maybe some gel that might be stuck in these somewhere. I'm guessing these are both going to be 194. Just like they were when they started. Because it actually looks like a grappling hook there. So, uh, once again, we got a bullet here. Now this was a, <clears throat> is about a hundred and some foot per second faster than sub velocities, but I don't think sub velocity is gonna hurt these at all. If anything, the pedals may not fold back as far and may give you an actual wider, um, wider wound track with the pedals not laid all the way back. So I'm expecting to get better uh, performance at subsonic velocities and what these were running at, uh, I think about 11.85. So, so all right, guys, keep in mind, uh, velocity data is coming up here in a slide after this and some still photos of these bullets. Uh, I'll get back and get them cleaned up and get some more pictures uh, at the bench. And, uh, and I'll have some closing thoughts coming up as well. So stay tuned. So guys, these things are just uh, absolutely wicked looking. I mean, these, uh, these actually hurt just looking at them, uh, you know, thinking about what these would be doing. So if you saw the wound track there, uh, not only were these opened up, this is uh, from 0 .308 uh, to 7 8 These are both opened up to right at 7 8 of an inch. And uh, I'm telling you, these were going through and they were spiraling, I think maybe two or three complete spirals uh, as they went through target. And you've got four arms basically here just cutting as they're spiraling. And, you know, the, the bleeders that are going to come from this and the temporary wound cavity at the beginning when they're opening up, uh, it was just going to, you know, for, for large game, hogs, deer, 
uh, I'd say even, even larger than deer, uh, antelope, uh, other targets, these would be absolutely a wonderful choice, especially I was for a subsonic loading, uh, running suppressed and, uh, yeah, just, uh, just amazing results on these. Um, All right, guys, the Lehigh Defense uh, 194 grain uh, Max Expander. And uh, yeah, like I said, this, this thing was extremely impressive. Um, you know, I, my only thought on this bullet, uh, if you saw on the velocity chart, this was hitting at 1180 foot per second. That's uh, 120 foot faster, uh, about 10% faster than, uh, than subsonic velocities. And I actually wonder, there's a slower speed with this bullet that's probably not going to bend those pedals back as far. So I'm, I'm wondering if I got, if I overexpanded and actually collapsed the pedals back up uh, on this test load because it was running so fast versus if it had been down around 1,000 to 1,060 foot per second at actual sub-velocity, if the pedals would have opened up and stayed a little bit wider on the profile going through. But... uh I will be adjusting this load down uh, and doing some more test loads with this. I do want this to be a subloading. So once I get a, a good subloading on this, I'll probably put a couple more of these in the gel block and do a follow-up video on that. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Comments, uh, let's hear it. You know, I want to see your thoughts on these. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.